Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is my favorite Final Fantasy game of all time. I did not think I was going to say those words coming out of this game because I knew the game would probably deliver on my expectations, but they absolutely wiped the floor and surpassed all of them. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth took all the things I loved from the original and the remake and did them perfectly, while also adding new elements to expand upon the original content further. Now, I'm not about to act like I'm a mega Final Fantasy fan. I'm a huge fan when it comes to VII because I've played every title, even their shitty Battle Royale, but I have not played every mainline Final Fantasy title. I've played 7, 10, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So me saying that Rebirth is now my favorite Final Fantasy game might not mean shit to you, and the only reason I bring this up is because I do not want any Final Fantasy VI fans to crucify me. I don't know where I got this headcanon that Final Fantasy VI fans are psychopathic loyalists, but I've seen how they react when people say that seven is better than six, so I'm sticking with the bit. But the main reason I love Rebirth more than the previous titles I mentioned is because this game took all the things I loved from those games while also improving, fixing, and getting rid of things that I didn't like in those games as well. At some point, I'm going to do reviews for all those games, but to give an example on the most recent title in the franchise, Final Fantasy 16. I did not like the areas in the game, nor did I like the majority of the side missions. And if you want to know why, the link to my review will be in the description. So I came out of FF16 with those problems fresh in my head when I jumped into Rebirth. But Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth not only proved me wrong, they overachieved on everything I expected them to do in this game. Some know me as the world's greatest materia hunter. Others, an unstoppable assassin. And the rest, a benevolent and beautiful ninja. But who am I truly? Who ties what rose? The one and only Yuffie! So in this game, you return as the Elite Five, as they are now wanted criminals being hunted down by Shinra. And during this time, Cloud gives us the history of his relationship with Sephiroth, giving us more information on what his plan is and what he could be after. So now the gang's goal is to find Sephiroth while dealing with their own personal shit as well. So the story is very simple, but can be very confusing if you focus on certain details. The gang's goal is to find Sephiroth. So they follow these black hooded people because they believe that they are also following Sephiroth. Simple, right? But if you want to understand more on what's going on with the black hooded people and why they're looking for Sephiroth in the first place, that's when things start to get a little complex because you never get a direct answer. And they not only do this for the black hooded people, they do this for the main cast as well. Most of their backstories are pretty simple until you look into them and then you start to realize something right especially for cloud i only bring this up because i know this might bother some people but the reason it didn't bother me was because i feel like it was the writer's intention to have the player figure it out for themselves i say this because i feel like i figured almost everything out by the time i got to the end of the game the hooded people's dilemma all the character dilemmas hell even cloud's dilemma i understood very clearly by the end of the game but then the game smacks me in in the face and gives us this mysterious second story that progresses throughout the game as well, where you play as Zack and try to figure out just what the hell is going on with the world. Now this, this I still don't understand. This was never in the original game and the ending for this story specifically left me even more confused. I have some idea, but nothing clear cut compared to everything else in this game. For those of you who understood what was going on, Please tell me because I am still in the dark. I'll probably watch an announce video going into the game later, but if anyone can explain the Zack shit in the simplest way possible for a dumb dumb like me, I'd appreciate it. But with all that said, overall, the story was so much fun. Ooh, what's this place? Where is everyone? And uh, wait, what the hell y'all doing? Oh, yeah. 
What the hell y'all doing over here? I'll be officially joining the counterterrorism unit. Can we help you? Yeah, I can help me. Kind of in the middle of something. Check the helmet. Yeah, that's right. Peep the suit. Oh, Captain, I, I, yeah, that's I'm right. Sorry, I'm sorry, did I interrupt y'all? Outside. Yeah. Now. Get outside. Yes, Jazz time is after hours. That's right. If there was one word to describe this game, it would simply be fun. Barely anything in the main story felt tedious and it was an emotional thrill ride from start to finish. As I live and breathe, there it was. Come on. I'm bless your heart dropping by for Eleanor's birthday. What? Hell, Marlene, set a place for Barrett. <laughs> yeah, he's looking fit as a fiddle. Oh, good question. She ain't with him. Where's Myrna? She ought to be here. Nine. What happened to you? It is rare for a JRPG to not feel tedious for me, especially at the end. But this game delivered on everything I wanted and more. And we'll, <laughs> we'll get to everything I wanted later in the video. But main story aside, after all the shit I said about the side missions in Final Fantasy 16, the side missions in Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth are incredible. Some of them are emotional. Some of them are hilarious. And some of them are just, Weird. <laughs> Did someone say living legend? <coughs> <coughs> And I also lied when I was talking about the main story of this game because the real main story of this game is Queen's Blood. I never thought there would be a card game that would surpass Gwent for me, but Queen's Blood took over my entire playthrough of this game. I gotta make sure I'm putting my baby's fate in the right hands. Mind if we go around? You gonna make me fight you to find your card? What kind of mess? He was like, yeah, can you find his card for me? Nah, I, I need you to prove me, prove to me that you can actually find- like, What? I'm gonna whip your ass, I'm gonna steal that card. All right, we done, we done, we done. Wrap it up, wrap it up, coach. Wrap it up. We done. Call it complete devastation. I became obsessed with this game. Whenever we got to a new area, I would immediately look on that map to see who was playing Queen's Blood. I'm not a pushover like some folks. <laughs> nah, you just like the rest. None but an ant to be squished by me. Look at that! Call it ref! Call the match! Stop the match! This is destruction! Complete devastation! You don't understand, this became an addiction. And I needed to prove to everyone that I was the best. Tell you what, you beat me. I'm the best! That card is all yours. So, you game? You just made the biggest mistake of your life. That's what Queen's Blood is. Queen's Blood is my life cloud. Don't you ever disrespect it with those damn dumbass questions, mother. <laughs> All right, sorry. Hey, let's play. You bust out those cards, boy. Did you just call me boy? I said it before, and I'll say it again. Never lost a Queen's Blood game. Never will lose a Queen's Blood game. Complete and utter devastation. Give me my Chocobo and Moogle car. Really? That's the card? And the thing is, they could have just made it a simple card game and I would have been fine. But some genius at Square Enix decided to give this simple card game a whole Yu-Gi-Oh story arc with cutscenes and everything, while also deciding to give it the darkest lore in the entire game. I said it before, I'll say it again, I will say it all the time, never lost a Queen's Blood, never will lose a Queen's Blood. What happened? What is this? 
Okay, I'm scared. What the? What is this? I don't understand. It was just supposed to be a game. What? This that that legit scared me. What what the hell is going on? There it is again. In that voice. Could it be? It has returned. What no, the hell? That's impossible. It's just a silly card the game. What? What? Huh? That That was I thought I thought this was just a cards game, man. I won't expect some attack on Titan level lore with this. What is go what was that? Sephiroth who? I'm not even joking when I say this. Regina was the hardest boss in the entire game. She was the real final boss of this game for me. And just a reminder, Queen's blood is optional. So you can just miss this whole story arc and this character completely if you don't play. And speaking of characters, I got a lot to say on this topic. On top of reuniting with our companions, we also get a relationship meter as well, where depending on the choices you make and the personal missions you do with them, you can increase their meter and have them like you more. That was the moment I realized that God heard my prayers. And a Tifa romance was actually possible in this game! Say, do you remember a guy named Emilio from Nibelheim? <laughs> oh, you know what I gotta say it. <laughs> Only person from the village I remember is you. Huh? <laughs> okay then. Wait. <laughs> See that? Your relationship with Tifa has deepened. <laughs> it didn't just change. It changed heavily with that line. It changed heavily with that line. <laughs> And as I found out later, whichever character on the team has the highest rank with Cloud by a certain chapter, they will eventually <laughs> ask you out on date. Oh my god, I get to go on my date with Tifa! Wait, what the fuck? No. No! Ah! And it's not even just the main cast that were great. Even the side characters were memorable in this game. And to help you guys out, I'm going to be ranking every character in this game. So I'm going to be ranking every character in FF7 Rebirth. That's right, every single character in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. So, let go. Anyway, we starting it off like we did in Remake with Aerith. Now, I remember, I definitely remember what I gave her in uh, in Remake, I believe it was B, B tier, and would I say she's still B tier after everything that happens to her, everything that goes on in Rebirth, and after all the moments and side missions you do of her in Rebirth? No, I do not think she's B tier anymore, so with that being said, I think I think Rebirth does a phenomenal job when it comes to doing the side missions and giving each character their own specific side missions really helped for all of the characters and really helped them grow. But even with that, I do think that, especially in the main story, when we get to the moments where she ends up being serious and she has those moments where she, she has to not be as bubbly, those are actually my favorite moments with Aerith. So with that being said, there are a lot more moments like that in Rebirth, and I'm going to give her an A tier. Like, I love her bubbly nature, but for me personally, there's just something about when she gets serious and she's actually trying to, like, save everyone and do her best to protect everyone, where I feel like you can really get, you can really get the true nature of her character and really see why she's such, why she's such a good character. So, I definitely will give Rebirth that, and Rebirth did a phenomenal job with really showing off her character, because honestly, in the original, I didn't really, I knew, I, I knew that was the case, but I didn't really feel it in the original. Obviously, maybe it was the pixels, but it is what it is. Anyway, next up, we have my boy Barrett. Oh man, Barrett, Barrett, Barrett. Now, just like in Remake, I gave him an A tier. And in this game, you think I'm about to give him an A tier? Absolutely not. No, this man is going straight into S tier. This man's development, for his development towards Cloud, his development as a character, seeing him 
seeing him learn to become more more kind-hearted and less less aggressive and show his heart more especially with the moments with him and red 13 him and yuffie and especially him and cloud i feel like there are so many more moments where he's able to breathe and especially what really shows off his resilience is when we get to his backstory. His backstory is so good. And I was, out of everything that I knew was going to be in Rebirth, I was looking forward to that the most because I knew how big of a moment that was for his character. And out of all the companion characters, besides, uh, <clears throat> besides Chifa and uh, besides, besides that, uh, Barrett is the best companion he is he is he straight up is the best companion in rebirth with everything he goes through with his backstory with his struggles with his change in character and his dynamic with the rest of the cast he's phenomenal he 100 is such a phenomenal character and i am so glad i am so glad they really went that far with him in rebirth i'm so happy with that i'm so happy thank you square enix for that thank you and with that, we now have Kate Sith. Kate Sith? Kate, Kate Sith. Kate Sith? Sith, oh, suffering suck attacks. Oh, <laughs> cut that out. Anyway, we have Kate Sith. And here's the thing. In the original game, I did not like Kate Sith at all. And I know I'm not the only one. I did not care about his character. I did not care about his movesets. I did not care about anything this character had to offer. But that being said, in Rebirth, I actually, one, remember his character, and two, I actually love the accent they gave him. They actually did it. I did not think his character was going to have an accent, but that was legit the best thing they could have did for his character. Now, gameplay-wise, he's still trash, but that being said, he's less trash than he was in the original. Will I ever use him again? Uh, no, but I will say he is better than how he was in, in Remake, and not Remake, in the original. But, <clears throat> but gameplay-wise, it's a hard ball because if this was the original, he'd immediately get trash again. But since since he is a good enough character in the main story, I would at least give him a C tier. I think he is C. I think he's C average at best. And I, and if his gameplay was better, I probably would have given him at least a B. But C is a fair rank for it. It balances him out. He's good in the main story, he's bad in the gameplay department, and that's, and it evens out to an average score, basically. Anyway. And now we are back with the man of the hour, the main character himself, Cloud Strife. Oh, man. Now, I had a few things to say about Cloud, like, talking about the fact that he's, like, very closed off, and he doesn't really show his emotions that much. The only time you really see that is during the, the dance sequence and when he does dress up. That's, like, the only time you ever see him get vulnerable in Remake. But in this game, there are, thank God, so many moments where you get to see Cloud's vulnerability and his absolute goofiness of a character because he likes to act like he's like hard and mean and like tough and whatnot but when in reality everyone already knows this who's played the original or just who knows cloud as a character he's so goofy he's so goofy he wants to be a bad boy so bad but he's such a goofy character and you see so many moments like that in the game with him and I, it makes me so happy with him as a character just seeing like the development and seeing how he how he transcended as a character especially giving him especially making the player give him choice based dialogue also help with his character as well so if you want to see him say a specific line or do a sp specific thing that you feel like would work with Cloud's character more you can do that with his character in this game and I love that you can build the cloud that you think he should be and I really love that for his character so that being said honestly I already had two rankings I was debating on giving him but you know what I think I was debating on an A but the more I think about it and how good his dialogue was, I'm going to actually give him an S tier. I think he straight up deserves it. Now, I will say, the inner torment that he goes through is slightly, like, not confusing, but it's, like, somewhat complex if you don't really look into it and you're just trying to figure out what, what's going on in his head and whatnot. But even with that being said, I think they do such a good job, and I love the moments of him being so goofy and just really showing that side of him that I... I really enjoyed that. And he's like, 
a lot less closed off and reserved compared to how it was in Remake, and this was the cloud that I wanted from the start. Now, I understood why we didn't get that from the start, but the fact that we get that now makes me so happy so you know what s tier perfect now i will say i will put barrett above him so that's that is that's not changing so it is what it is anyway so next up we have a character who i rated in the remake off screen for reasons because he didn't even show up until the end of the game and he wasn't even playable but this time since he is playable and he does have a lot of screen time let us talk about red 13 red 13 okay Man, oh man. I already love Max Middleman's portrayal as Red 13. I love the voice that he played off of him. And I also like, no spoilers, the development and seeing Red 13 for who he truly is. I really loved how Max Middleman played that off. And I loved seeing his development to the cast and just everything he does in the game. It's just so fun. It's just good. Like he can he can give out knowledge while also being just a fun character to be around at the same time and being a useful character while not being a drag. He can be serious when he needs to, he can be goofy when he needs to, and he can be just like a caring supportive system for the entire group that I really enjoyed for Red Red 13. And I loved Red 13 in the original, but in the re in Rebirth Man, he's such a good character. And like, I feel like the only difference between him and this and him and the original is just the fact that we actually get to really see it in full quality and voiced. Because I think it's legit the same character in the original. So with that being said, S tier, 100%. And I'll put him above Cloud. I got him. He, he's not above Barrett. Even though I love his chemistry, chemistry between him and Barrett, but he is above Cloud. He had phenomenal development throughout the entire game, and I really loved his entire character throughout the entire game from beginning to end. Perfect character, Red 13. Anyway, next up, we have a character that was only playable in Integrate, but did a phenomenal showcase of her character anyway. Next up, we talk about Yuffie. Now, I will say this, when it comes to development-wise, Barrett, without a doubt, is an S-tier of a companion. But when it comes to a character who is just absolute fun from beginning to end throughout the entirety of this game, Yuffie killed me in this game. She was so hilarious. All the goofy moments, the funny moments, all the wacky shenanigans that go on in this game. You can mostly blame Yuffie for like all of them. She did a phenomenal job in this game. The actress did a phenomenal job. And I already liked her in, in Integrate, but man, she really, when she finally joins the team, she gets to really show off just how, just how good of a character Yuffie was. And in the original, I don't really care for Yuffie like that. I mean, she was like there and I used her for like a little bit because I did, I did like her moveset. But afterwards, character wise, she was kind of annoying, especially when she like, spoiler alerts, well, only spoiler for the original. Stole your material once you asked her to join the group. So, uh, yeah, she was kind of she's kind of irritating on that regard. But bringing her in as a canon character was the best decision they ever could have made. And she is a spitfire of just goofiness, wackiness, and fun. And can also be serious at the same time without it losing the tone of this game. Yuffie is the funnest character in the game for me. She is so funny, so hilarious, and I loved every moment when she is on screen because I know it's going to be a breath of fresh air with whatever she does. And with that being said, uh, it, it feels weird. Like, I feel like I'm lowering clout with each, each point when I talk about these characters. But, I mean, they're just that good of a character. And honestly, I like Red 13, but honestly, I'm going to put I'm gonna put Yuffie above her. I'm, I'm going to put Yuffie above him. Like, I, I really like Red 13, but Yuffie just... It's just like every single scene with Yuffie just made me smile and that's what and that's the sign of a good character for me. That's the sign of a perfect character for me. Anyway. Okay, next up we have Biggs. Now Biggs is in an interesting position. He is in a very, very interesting position considering the fact that he's he's in the story but not the main story he's in the storyline with zach which is already confusing enough as it is and without spoiling anything 
I... It's... It's... Um, it's so hard for Biggs in this game because he does have screen time, but not enough screen time for me to, like, really think about changing up his character, unfortunately. And that's the one thing that I kind of do feel disappointed about when I saw that Biggs was going to be in Rebirth. I thought they was going to do a little bit more of his character. So with that being said, I kind of feel like I got to put him the same place I put him in Remake. So with that being said, I got to put him in B tier. Like he's, he's a good character, but I feel like, I feel like he had just about, if not less screen time in this game than he did in Rebirth, honestly. So with that being said, I, yeah, I think B tier is probably the perfect rank for him because there really wasn't much of a change in it. There was a change in his character, but it was really just the screen time that I felt like he didn't really, he didn't really utilize that screen time enough to really make me change up his ranking, R rather not even for good or bad. So I feel like this is, this is fine. Honestly, this is fine. Okay, next up we have my boy. We have Sid Vicious, ladies and gentlemen. Oh man. Okay, now, I have a lot to say about Sid. This is an interesting one. I liked him in this game. I actually really liked him in this game a lot more compared to how I saw him in the trailer. I didn't think he was bad in the trailer. I was just kind of like, that wasn't like what I thought his character was going to be like. But once you actually play the game, I actually really liked Sid. And I really liked, uh, I really liked the actor's performance of how they did Sid and whatnot. My only problem with how they did Sid and just the direction the, the writers went with Sid as his character is um uh, he doesn't swear as much as I thought he would. He he rarely he he swears from like time to time, but not as much as he did in the original. If you played the original, anyone who's played the original know that this man has a sailor mouth. Every single sentence is a swear word coming out and i understand why they couldn't do that but the thing is like they didn't have to like i'm not asking for like an f-bomb every sentence and whatnot but i'm at least asking for like just like a, a splice of just like just a sprinkle in just some swear word here and there just so it really fits with his character but in this one i feel like they don't really they don't really hone into that at all like regardless of whether it's a big swear word or a bad or like a small swear word and whatnot I feel like they didn't utilize that when it is a big part of his character like some people might not care But for me, I actually feel like it does it does matter for his character and I will say because obviously Spoiler alert. He's not playable in this game yet. I would have to give him I still really enjoy his character though so th with that being said, I will still give him a B tier. I will. Matter of fact, I'll put him above these two as well. Yeah, I still like them. Like I said, I just wish he swore. Like, I just wish he had that sailor mouth. Because that was really such a funny... That was such a funny bit of Sid. And also, I thought he would be... I also feel like he should be a, more, a lot more, like, aggressive as well. I feel like I expect a lot more aggression from Sid. And I feel like we did get a sprinkle of that between him and Barrett. But that's probably the closest thing we ever got to that that type of aggression that I expected Sid to have. So hopefully we do get a bit of that between Sid and Barrett, and we'll just see how it goes in the next game. I have huge potential for Sid in the next game, so I'm not worried about it. So at the end of the day, I'll give him B now, and hopefully he'll be an A or an S in the next game. So we'll see. We'll have to wait and see. Okay, so next up we have Dine. Oh man, Barrett's best friend and the one, the nightmare haunting Barrett's past, basically. Oh man, I knew, I knew the dying storyline was going to hit me. I just didn't think it was going to hit me that hard. Like that, the whole sequence of Barrett's backstory is so good, especially when Barrett reunites with Dime. That hit me so much more, so much more than I expected it to. And I feel like, even though there's a lot of like, obviously like fantasy and magical stuff that goes on in this game, I feel like there was such a sense of realism to Dime's character when you first see him after, after Barrett meets him, after years of thinking he was dead. And the moment when he does see him and he sees just like how Dine is now, just seeing what happened to Dine, like it really, 
it really just hit me a lot more than I expected. And I really like that. I really liked seeing that. And it really, it, it really felt like you really felt bad for Baird in that situation. And it almost felt like even though he found a friend he thought was dead, it felt like he lost a friend at the same time because the guy that he knew all his life when he met up, met up with him again was basically gone. And it was, it was such a, it was such a sad thing to see, but from a writing standpoint, it was such a well-written scene. And I love that. It's probably one of my favorite scenes in the entire game. Just seeing that, that just the whole arc between Dine and Barrett was just so good. So with that being said, would I, see the thing is, I want to give him an S tier, but I honestly wish it was just a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer. That's all I would have wished for, and I would have easily given him S tier, but with that being said, I would have to give him A tier. I would. I would. I was debating on giving him S, but the thing is, I read, hmm. See, now I'm really thinking about it. I'm really thinking about it because I really did love it. I really did love the whole dynamic between Barrett and Dine, to the point where, even with enough screen time, does he deserve S? Oh, man. You know what? Really looking back at that cutscene, yeah, I'm gonna give him S. I'm gonna give him S. I'm not even gonna, yeah, I'm not even gonna complain about it. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, fair. I think it's 100% fair to give him S tier for that. Yeah, I have no complaints. So next up, we have the newest member of the Turks, the latest and greatest, Elena. Now, I'm, I'm gonna keep it a buck. I don't really remember Elena like that in the original. So to tell you whether or not personality-wise it matches or it fits or whatnot, I really couldn't tell you. But I will say for Rebirth, I really enjoyed her character. Now, I will say, I don't think her character, in my opinion, I don't think her character, excuse me, I don't think her character stands out as much compared to the other Turks. Like, I like her, but I feel like in comparison to, like, Reno's, Reno's, like, very arrogant and brashness, like, uh, like, Rude's more, like, serious and more composed demeanor, and, like, and songs, like, leadership and really, and, and like, intelligence, I feel like Elena kind of has, I feel like Elena, where, where she's in the category of, like, being more of, like, a, a goofball, I, I feel like that's where she is, even though she does have a lot of, like, serious moments and whatnot. But I feel like in comparison to the other Turks, Elena really is the weakest. And that's not a bad thing, because she's still, I still liked her character. I'm just saying, in comparison of the other Turks, even the ex-Turks, honestly, I probably would say she is the weakest. But I still liked her character, so with that being said, I will give her... A B tier. I will say, I think B is a fair rank for her. I did like her character and I did like the screen time that she had and whatnot. Even if she is the weakest of the Turks, the Turks are still all great characters. Like the fact that a good amount of the Turks that I like are S tier or A tier and whatnot, that's me saying that Elena is the worst and she got B tier really just shows just how good the Turks are as characters, honestly. So, with that being said, B tier. And speaking of the Turks, we are back, ladies and gentlemen, with the boy, Reno. Now, unfortunately, unfortunately, Reno was on vacation throughout the majority of Rebirth, and he wasn't in this game for as long as he was compared to the first game. I'm gonna keep it a buck, and I'm just gonna spoil this real quick, because it's not even that big of a spoiler. He's only, he doesn't show up in the game until like the last part of Rebirth. Like that's the only time you see Reno come back. Honestly, honestly, I didn't think he was going to show up at all. I legit thought that they were probably just going to save his comeback for uh, the third game. But with that being said, he does show up. And honestly, if he didn't show up at all in Rebirth, I wasn't even going to put him on the list like straight up. I mean, if he didn't show up, why would he even be on the list of Rebirth? But since he is here and i still like reno as a character i'm gonna give him a tier he doesn't get s tier like in remake because i mean like i said he's barely in the game but i still like his character enough just for like the little moment that he shows up i still really like this character so thank god he's still a great character i just wish we had more of him but i know we're gonna get more of him in 
in uh in the in the third game. So yeah. And with that being said, we now have Reno's right hand man, Rude. Now, you're probably thinking Rude is gonna get an A rank like he did in remake. Uh, nah nah. This man is going into S tier. Out of all of the members of the Turks in this game, Rude was my absolute favorite in Rebirth. He killed it in Rebirth. All his, all of his scenes, all of the moments, every single moment that he was on screen, he absolutely, he absolutely killed it. He was so good, so phenomenal, and he had some of the funniest and some of the best moments with the Turks in this entire game. And what, and what molded it all together was that scene in Junon. When you're that when you're that Shinra, Shinra captain and you're looking for different so for other uh, Shinra officers, uh, just uh, just look for Rude. Just uh, just go go ahead and look for him. That, that that's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna spoil anything. I'll let you find the scene for yourself. And that was the moment where I immediately was gonna put him in S tier. And it's it's so funny because where Reno. Where Reno didn't get that much screen time in this game, Rude got a lot of screen time. And it was like the polar opposite from uh, from uh, Remake. Though, I think, I think, actually, I think their screen time was like a very equal, I feel like. But man, this was a Rude show for the Turks, man. Rude really shined in this game. And I have no complaints with giving him S tier at all. And here we have with the Doctor himself, we have Professor Hojo. Now... I've already given my thoughts on Professor Hojo in Remake, talking about how he's such a grimy, nasty, and disgusting man, and that makes him a really great villain regardless. And in this game, oh, he really shows that. He really shows just how much of a just awful, awful person he is. And I, I just really, like, Hojo legit is the reason why Final Fantasy VII exists. And even though, even though I feel like he didn't get as much screen time as he did in Remake, he still really showed out and just showed everyone why he's just such an awful person, even for the little amount of screen time he has, which is crazy to me. But with that being said, I'm still not going to give him S tier, because I feel like we're still not at the moment where we get to see him at his worst yet. So with that being said, I'm going to still give him an A tier. Still an A, still a phenomenal villain, but I feel like we still have not seen the worst of Professor Hojo just yet. We'll see in part three, and we'll see where we go from there. Okay, and next up, we have the newest president of Shinra Corporation. We have Rufus Shinra. Now, I talked about him a little bit in Remake, but I mean, he barely had that much screen time in the remake for me to talk about him. But even then, I still talked about him. I even did it on camera and everything. But this game, you really get some screen time with Rufus. And I feel like in this game, you really get to see what Rufus is all about as a character. I would like to describe Rufus very much like an Aizen type character from Bleach, where he, where he, he plans ahead and he always thinks about he always thinks about how he can use the people that are on his side and use the people that are enemies of Shinra as well. Just like how he wants to use Cloud, use Avalanche, and use the rest of his rest of like the people who are against him for his own bidding if they get something out of it too. And I really liked how they did Rufus in this game. Alrighty, next up we have the main antagonist of Final Fantasy VII, the entire series as a whole. We have Sephiroth, baby. Now, I already gave my thoughts on Sephiroth and how the fact that I did not like the fact that he was even a part of the Midgard arc at all, considering the fact that he doesn't even show up in Midgard at all in the first part of the original game. But here's the thing. This is the arc where we actually get to see Sephiroth. And what I loved about what they did for Sephiroth as a character is the fact that not only do we get to see the backstory between him and Cloud, but we also get to play as Sephiroth in his backstory. And that is not what I expected us to get at all. That was phenomenal. The fact that instead of like, cause in the original, 
you have it's turn-based combat and and in the game where you do cloud cloud's backstory you have cloud and you have sephiroth you play as cloud and you just see sephiroth play on his own and whatnot and you get to see just how strong Sephiroth is from that perspective. You get to see just how strong he is by like seeing what what how much damage he does when he when we're like fighting that dragon enemy. Cloud does like I don't know like four damage, and Sephiroth does like ninety nine point nine 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 percent like damage basically, and just kills it in one shot. And it really showed like. Uh, it pretty much showed just like the the power scaling basically between Sephiroth and Cloud. Like Cloud was here, Sephiroth was down here, but in this game. Playing as Sephiroth was the perfect way to showcase just how broken he is. Because Sephiroth was the most fun character to play in this game. And honestly, I hope we do get like, I don't know, like I don't like some new game plus or DLC where we get to like just play him in the main story or whatnot if we want to and just like switch him out. Because man, it was so fun to play as Sephiroth and whatnot. He was such a fun character to play. And obviously, because you really get to see him as a character in this game and really see like what he does in this game it really shows off just how just how powerful and how insane of a villain he is and, and at the same time how tragic of a villain he is because of the situation that 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 he's in and whatnot now that being said i'm not gonna i'm not gonna victimize him at all because i mean he is a victim but at the same time he also he also kind of joined the dark side a lot quicker than I feel like, but at the same time, you also got to remember that he was in that, he was down there for a long time reading up stuff about Genova and what was going on and whatnot, that it actually was a slower process the more I think about it. And because of that, I really liked, I really liked how they used him in this game and how he, and how they used him to manipulate Cloud in this game. Then with that being said, I'm gonna give him an A tier. I think it's not an S tier yet, but I'm gonna give him an A tier for how good of a job he did of, of manipulating the scenes, manipulating Cloud, and pretty much doing everything in his favor. I really liked, and I really just loved how they showed off the power of Sephiroth in this game because they didn't really show off the power of Sephiroth in, in Remake. But in this game, they get to show it off and they do it perfectly. As a matter of fact, He's a high A rank. I'll put him even above Eric when it comes to this situation. So yeah, A tier without a shadow of a doubt. Okay, with that being said, we now have Sung. Now, I didn't really talk about Sung as as much in, uh, well, I didn't even talk about him at all on, on my remake one. I did that one off screen. But in this one, see, the reason why I talked about him off screen is because I feel like the song is such a complex character and I didn't really get that much screen time of him compared to Reno and Rude, where it was hard for me to feel like talking about him as much. But in this game, I have enough I have enough stuff about him to really talk about him, so that's what we're gonna be doing now. So Sun Sung is I really love Sung as a character because of how of how double-sided he is and how gray of a character he is because he's not he is literally the most middle character in the entire game he is not a villain he is not a hero he is just there to do his job and protect the president of shinra who is rufus basically that is basically his job and it's funny because in crisis core you get to see back when he was a good guy and just seeing like what he used to do and whatnot and just seeing how he was as a character changed and i always wondered like what what because i feel like they haven't really showed it in remake or rebirth yet of like what what really led to that change really from his character in crisis core to his character now that i feel like i'm i'm so curious to see like what could have added or what could have made that change to really make him a lot more i don't know more like cold yeah i feel like cold is the word i'm looking for more like cold and not and not as and not as not as uh I don't know, not as soft as he was compared to uh, compared to Christ Crisis Core. I feel like, though at the same time, Zack was a, was a soldier and he was working for Shinra, and and obviously Sung was working for Shinra as well. And he's like, I guess he's very loyal to Shinra. I think what kind of adds to his aggressiveness, in my opinion and in my head canon, is the fact that he knows that some of the things going on in Shinra is twisted, and it's kind of made him more twisted in the process as well, knowing that he's working with very corrupt people and i feel like that's what really changed his character and i feel like he is kind of 
he is kind of in his head thinking about like what he is is what he doing right is what he's doing wrong and what i did like in the remake is reno do reno calling him out when they uh they blew up the blew up the reactor and and reno literally said was any of that necessary did we really have to do that and whatnot and you see you see a pause for sung for a, for a split second really thinking like really maybe maybe that was too much like what is going on and whatnot but at the same time he like stops him and he just says like no that was necessary like we had to do it that was our job basically but i really do like sung sung as a character do i like him do i like him more than rude or reno no, no, not yet. And to be fair, it's always been like that. I always like Reno and Rude more. But with that being said, he still is an interesting character. And I really hope, I really hope he has a good character arc in the third game. I honestly want more from Sung in the next game. I want a lot more from him and whatnot. Because we did get a boss fight for him, which was good. But I want a lot more in the character department for Sung that we didn't really get in the other game. So with that being said, A tier okay ladies and gentlemen so next up we have vincent valentine i'ma just keep it a buck if there was anyone, anyone, anyone to be in the wife list that isn't Tifa, it will 1000% be Vincent. God, I love this character so much. I love everything he, I love everything he portrays. I love his character arc. I love his performance. Matthew Mercer killed it in this game and his performance his portrayal, his acting, his design, just everything about Vincent. He is just, obviously he's not playable in this game yet. He's going to be playable in the third game. And I am so looking forward to all of the stuff that we're going to get with Vincent in the next game. Because I know, I know we're going to get a lot with Vincent in the next game. I know we will. Because considering how much stuff we got for the characters in Rebirth, and the new characters with Kate Sif and Yuffie in this game? I know we are going to be eating good with Vincent in the next game. Oh my god, I cannot wait. And the fact that he is already a wife wife material, like it already is like, he's a golden character. And I, and like Durga Service is a terrible game, but I will still play it just because of him alone. So I mean, that says it all right there. They better give him everything. They better throw everything at him in the next game. And all i gotta say is uh i'm looking forward to uh using i'm looking forward to using him and tifa throughout my entire party and never changing to anyone else unless it's mandatory so uh yeah that's what's gonna happen it is what it is okay and last but not least we have zach fair now man okay now i will say i not mean the dragon in the trash can just yet you think I'm joking, I legit did not mean to drag him in the trash can just yet, but here's the thing. I do not like the new voice of Zack. I already told you in Remake that the new voice is terrible, but with that being said, out of all the games that he has voiced in so far, from, from Remake, from Crisis Core Reunion, this is the best he has ever sound in this game. This is the best this actor has ever sounded for Zack in this game. But with that being said, I did like Zack and like, it, it, just, it pains me because Zack is my favorite Final Fantasy character of all time. But I feel like the way they did his storyline was so confusing. And I feel like I liked the screen time that he had, but considering that he didn't have that much screen time for me to, uh, I guess really put him as high as I would want to put him, I would have to give him a B tier. I like the times where he was on screen, but that being said, he was not on screen for that long. So with that being said, B tier is probably the fairest rank I could give him considering I liked it, but it could have been, we could have gotten more out of it that, and the thing is, I don't even know where we're going with the story arc in part three. 
with, well, specifically Zack's story arc. I know we're going in part three with the main story arc, but with Zack's story arc, I have no idea where we are going with this character. I have no idea where we're going with him. Like, I don't, I mean, the way it ended, without spoiling anything, I legit am so confused on what they're going to do with Zack the Third game, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. So with that being said, uh, here's my tier list, and I think this is a, yeah, I think this is fair. Honestly, I'm shocked there's not that many trash cans this time around, but uh, yeah. I mean, it just goes to show you that uh, Rebirth is a very phenomenal game with a lot of phenomenal characters. So, uh, yeah, it is what it is. So I've gone over most of the story and characters for the most part, but what's shocking is that there is actually a lot of game in this video game. Crazy, right? Just like the gameplay in the FF7 remake, the gameplay in Rebirth is so damn crisp. While the combat system is still the same from the remake, I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Rebirth expands upon this system by giving us new abilities, new summons, and team attacks finally. The team attacks are so good in this game and they saved my ass in literally every situation you have no idea how much i wanted this in the first game but combat ain't the only system in this game because there are a ton and i mean a ton of mini games in this video game and some of you might be thinking i'm only talking about the gold saucer specifically nah nah in the main story and in certain side missions there are mini games scattered everywhere in this game i came into one side mission expecting there to be a fight only to be sucked inside of a board game and then having to play said board game wait are they oh my god did they just get sucked into the game oh my god they did oh my god <laughs> They actually did it. That was one of many examples of things that could happen to you in this game. Don't you just hate it when you disguise yourself as a Shinra officer? And then next thing you know, you're now the leader of a whole parade. Yeah, we about to show him right now. This is my squad right now. This is my squad. About to make everyone look bad in comparison. Let's face, baby. Let's get it. Yeah, two. What? What? I messed up. I mean, uh, uh, and a one, and a two, and a one, two, three, and a one, and a two, and a one, two, three. Of course, some among you are deserving of special praise. Oh, definitely ain't me. For our first award, Not after that we performance. recognize the division whose exemplary display eclipsed all others. The prize for outstanding performance goes to. What? I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, of course, of course we stole the show with that performance of a masterpiece, of course, of course it, it was gonna happen, winners win, you know, it's just, that's just how it be, you know, it's just, I always knew, I like thank my mama, my grandmama, and everyone who brought me here today. There are so many mini games, they honest to God could make a whole party game out of them. As a matter of fact, I hope to God they make a multiplayer game with these mini games because the money is right in front of them. Hell, Queen's Blood and Chocobo Racing could be standalone titles by themselves. Now, I can see some people getting annoyed by the insane amount of mini games in this game. But you also have to understand, the original FF7 had a lot of mini games too. And honestly, the majority of mini games in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth were actually fun to play. Now, I'm not gonna lie and say that all of them were good, because there definitely were some outliers. This is so easy. Come on, it's right there. Just aim, aim and throw it. Just aim it. What was that? Come on, just aim it out. Why can't I why can't I aim at the- It's right there! What is that? I aimed right there! Nah, nah, this, this ain't the right time. This ain't the right time. Oh my god, the wait time is infuriating. I wanna break my monitor. I wanna break my monitor. Come on, just throw it in there. Just throw it in there. It is not hard. It's right there. Just throw it. Just throw it. Oh, it was right there! I, I wanna wait it. I wanna make sure this is precise. 
So it goes in there. Come on. Please? <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to wait this time. And just wait for it to come. And then throw it. No, it doesn't get that. Okay, this one's it. This is it. This is it. This is it right here. Yes, I knew it. I knew it. I, I knew that's what I had to do. I don't know what that I don't know what that other thing was last time. Additional accelerants required. Additional accel Huh? Huh? I gotta do it again! But for the most part, the only time a minigame ever got hard for me was whenever I tried to get the highest score. And I only did that to impress Tifa on our date. But before I gush about Tifa, and believe me, I could do that all night. <laughs> They call me the Gusha. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> what, what is wrong with me? I gotta gush about this world map first. When I saw the world map for the first time, I was in shock and awe for how big it was. How big will this map be? Because this will be the map of the whole game, probably, most likely. Look at this map. Look at this map. This is the game? Guys. Guys, look at this map. This is the game. This is the game right here. But then, as I get further into the game, I found out very quickly that the entire part of that map was only one region of the game. Each region has its own separate map that eventually connects together when you get to the climax of the game. And from this point on, every Final Fantasy game needs to take notes from this game. This is how you do an open world map. Not only is the map big, but it's full of shit to do. And collecting shit never feels like just because you can use every material you come across to craft potions. And none of the side missions feel pointless because those missions also help increase the relationship with your companions. So if you're trying to rank up a specific companion, do their missions. You'll know it's theirs because they'll be the main companion talking in the cutscene. It's very obvious. Everything is laid out perfectly on the map. And once you've already been to an area, you can simply click on the icon of the area itself to fast travel there, and getting to an area on foot would be a chore. But that's why we have our handy dandy chocobos. Each region has their own specific chocobo with their own unique abilities. You can also follow little chocobo chickens on the map, and they'll take you to resting areas where you can replenish your health and MP. And as for the chocobos you unlock in each region, I'm a terrible parent. I'm picking a favorite. So I'm going to be ranking every chocobo in each region. That's that's right, every chocobo in each region. So, let go. Anyway, we started off with Pico. Pico, the first chocobo you get in the game. Oh man, I really like this chocobo. It's a really like, a, it's a very like natural chocobo, really basic chocobo. You can never go wrong with the basics, but that, that being said, it is a basic chocobo. So I am going to have to give it, uh, nah, I like, I like the color though. I like the yellow. So you know what? I was going to give it C, but you know what? I'll give it B. Anyway. We have Bell. We have Bell, the mountain climber chocobo. We got the mountain climber chocobo. I really like the mountain climbing in this game, and it caught me off guard when when we got to the second region. And this is what the chocobo could do in the game. I did not know we was ever gonna get a chocobo that could climb up mountains with this game, and it is such a useful ability in this game that I have no complaints. Yeah, 100%. Bell, a tier. I, I love the Bell. Bell did phenomenal, and that, that mountain climbing is just so useful in this game. Just so useful. All right, next up, we have the Costa del Sol Chocobo. Now, this one does look prettier than Pico, so I mean, uh, I mean, I, I, I don't want I don't want Pico to get jealous, but I mean, it it, it does look better. I, li I like the colors of the of, I like the colors of the Costa del Sol one more. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll just put in, uh, I'll just put in B. All right, and we're, and anyway, all right. <clears throat> Don't let Pico see. All right, anyway. Anyway, anyway, we have the desert buggy. Now, the desert buggy 
quite frankly, is probably my favorite chocobo in the entire game. I think it's probably the cutest chocobo in the entire game. It looks adorable when you're riding on it, and just when it uh, when it just purrs and beaks at you, I just I just really think it's uh I just really think on the cuteness factor, it's the best chocobo. So yeah, I would have to give the desert buggy uh, S tier. Yeah, I think the desert buggy deserves to be S tier. Okay, so far I praised the world map and the regions for this game, but with that being said. Fuck Gaga. This region not only has my least favorite chocobo ability, but traversing or looking for anything in Gungaga, even when it's on the map, is a bitch. You remember that episode where SpongeBob, Patrick, and Squidward got stuck in that forest? That was me and Gungaga. And it also has the worst side mission in the entire game. You know what mission I'm talking about. I came into the mission over leveled. I can't pressure or stagger, they die too quick. But to even out my least favorite region in the game, let's talk about my favorite region in the game, which is easily the Corel region. Why you might ask? Two things, Costa del Sol. Did you miss us? Oh my God. Loud? Oh my God. And the gold saucer. Yeah! The king is here! Dio! This is what I wanted! This is what I needed! Yeah! This is the content I have wanted! This is what I've been waiting for! This is my game! Oh. <laughs> I can agree that the graphics of the original Final Fantasy VII is dated, but even on the PS1, the gold saucer was beautiful. So to see this beautiful amusement park fully rendered in 4K on my PS5 almost made me tear up. The gold saucer without a doubt is my favorite area in the entire game and I expected that. And to give it extra points, it was also the place where me and Tifa fell in love. This time we're gonna get it right. This time we're gonna... Oh shit. How did I miss that chest? Okay, that... Ow, you mother... Okay, this time we're gonna get it right. Alright. There's no way. <laughs> hey, what's uh, what's going on? Hey, how are you feeling? Do you need anything? Some food, water? I can use some. I'm I can fine. use some co company. You were right. I mean. Just needed some sleep. <laughs> you alone? Yeah, Red's off doing his own thing. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you wanna want to chill? Why not? I want to play. They're only letting you gotta... couples on tonight. Oh no! Oh no! Only letting couples? So on? Oh, that's crazy! <laughs> okay, so I have no idea what we're going to play, but that being said, I'm not screwing up this date. I'm getting the high score on every game we play, and I mean every game we play, and I'm not going to stop playing that game until I have the highest score for every game. All right, what's the high score on this bad boy? 35,000? Got it. Well, I'm not stopping until I beat it. Come on! Save the galaxy! Shoot it! Come on! Do not get hit. Do not get hit. I swear to God. I swear to God. I believe once this thing dies, my score will double. So I think after this, if I do not get... Come on. This has to be it. This has to be it. What is, what is the final score? What is the final score? Come on. Yes! I told you this date is gonna be perfect. High score, first try. You uh, want anything at the gift shop, Tifa? Here to exchange points. What they got? Ooh, I kinda want that. Let's see. You know, what? We'll, we'll check this later. You know, what? we're gonna we're gonna get we're gonna get more points. We're gonna get the highest score and everything, and then we'll come back. All right, what they got over here? Ooh, oh, this place looks nice. They got a, oh, they got a G-Bike simulator. Oh my God, they got a G-Bike simulator. Okay, that's the next game. Okay. Well, you're gonna, you're not gonna see me for about like an hour or two, Tifa, because I gotta, I gotta do something real quick, and uh, I, I'll be back in a bit. All right, she told me to do that, so I gotta do G bike first. All right, I'll I'll, I'll hold off on on Queen's blood. Oh god, that addiction just kicked in. Let me see, what's the high score? Thirty thousand. 
Oh, that's easy, baby. That's easy, baby. Put me into the matrix. Everyone get out of my way. I'm on a date. I will kill as many people as I can if it means I get to be with Tifa. That's right. Didn't just beat the high score. I went over the high score. 31,000 S rank, baby. Okay, so far we're giving this date an A+, plus, but the highest score is an S. Now, I'm trying to go for that S right now. I got to get the highest score in every other game first before I can get that S rank. So, we're getting there. Don't worry. Oh my god, this is Welcome the moment right here. This is the moment. Okay. Up with a in our cozy <sighs> Am I breathing okay? Does my breath smell good? All right. <clears throat> Let's get cozy. Escape the crowds. Yeah. Share a private moment be cool, together. be cool. Let's go, cool. be cool, be cool, Michael. Let's go. The memories you make here are sure to last a lifetime. Yeah, memories last a lifetime. Good. <laughs> Good lord. All right, don't get nervous now. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, we, we can go with her. Holy shit, she grabbed my, she grabbed my hand. She... Did it? What's going on? Did it shut uh, yeah, down? I don't know. Did it? Your attention, please. Huh? We're currently experiencing some minor no! difficulties. While our no! No! Hard to resolve this issue. No! We ask that you follow all staff instructions. Why? Our friendly cast members will show you the way. Thank Why? You and have a wonderful day. No! 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 And I don't even know where to start with the soundtrack. This is without a doubt one of my favorite soundtracks in Final Fantasy history. And if you want to know my two favorites, Regina's theme immediately stuck out to me for the simple fact that they gave this simple ass card game so much lore and the change in music from the standard Queen's Blood theme. To the violins of the virtuoso. As I said before, this was my final boss, but with that being said, my number one favorite track while also being my favorite boss fight in the entire game is Vincent. And it honestly feels unfair because this is not a Final Fantasy track. This is a Bloodborne track. But with all that said, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth gave us a fun-ass story, fun-ass characters, fun-ass gameplay, and a fun-ass world to explore. If Final Fantasy VII Remake was The Witcher 2, then Final Fantasy VII Rebirth was The Witcher 3. Square Enix didn't just give me a great game, they gave me a life lesson. The first time you try out something, you may do okay, you may even do really good. But if you take all that knowledge that you learned from that first attempt and implement that into your second, you will, without a shadow of a doubt, hit a home run. That is what Square Enix did with Rebirth, and that is what I did on my second date with Tifa. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. Is that it? Is that it? For real? No. No. Come on, come on, come on, Cloud! Yes! 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 Oh, man! We won! We won! Yes! So with all that said, my final verdict for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is the Platinum. Seal? of approval.